The Elevate Ultimate Binding Jib simplifies one of the most complicated and stressful tasks in Load 3, cutting binding and perfung channels. Unlike tower and cradle style jibs, the Ultimate Binding Jib cuts channels that are parallel to your sides rather than perpendicular to your top and back. This means that you get true, full depth channels at the full perimeter of your instrument regardless of any change in pitch. Another benefit to the Ultimate Binding Jib is its small footprint. It can easily be stored out of the way when not in use, instead of taking up a large amount of your bench space. The Ultimate Binding Jib is compatible with the Bosch Colt and rigid laminate trimmers. When you order your setup, you'll receive the jib body, a standard guide, and a shear cut router bit. The standard guide is great for classical and steel string size bodies and eliminates the need for interchangeable bearings. Elevate also carries extra cutter heads and a solid guide accessory. The solid guide accessory expands the jig's capabilities so that it can be used on smaller instruments like ukuleles, mandolins, electrics, arch tops, and more. To set up the ultimate binding jig, the first thing you'll need to do is remove the plastic base from your trimmer. For the purposes of this video, setup and demonstration will be done using the rigid laminate trimmer. If you're using the Bosch Culp, make sure that the power button is facing up when mounted on the jig. The rigid laminate trimmer can be mounted in any configuration you like. The mounting holes on the ultimate binding jig are slightly elongated to allow for easy alignment between the trimmer and the jig. Use the four screws that came with the trimmer to attach it to the body, leaving each screw just slightly loose. To align your trimmer with the jig body, first ensure the guide holder is in contact with the zero bar. With the trimmer unplugged, unlock its base and extend the router bit into the jig body. Then relock the base. You'll need a wide, stiff straight edge. I prefer a machinist square. Place the straight edge across the guide and over the router bit. Move your trimmer up and rotate the bit until it just touches the straight edge. The easiest way to see this is by looking at the amount of light passing between the bit and the straight edge. Once in alignment, lock the trimmer in place by snugging down the four screws. Then double check your alignment. To set the jig to make a cut, you'll need the material you'll be inlaying. Let's start with binding. First loosen the knob on the back of the jig. Then use the guide holder adjustment knob to pull the guide holder down. Insert your binding between the guide holder and the zero bar, then use the adjustment knob to raise the guide holder back up until it touches the binding and lock it down. You'll want just a small amount of resistance when pulling out the binding. This sets the jig for the thickness of your material. To set the height of your material, adjust the amount of router bits stick out on your trimmer. Now plug in your trimmer and make a test cut and some scrap to check your settings. To set the ultimate binding jib for a purfling cut, the procedure is similar to the setup for a binding cut, but this time you'll need both your binding and your purfling. Once again, make a test cut and scrap to check your settings. Before you cut a channel, you'll want to be aware of the three points of contact on the ultimate binding jig, the guide donut and the two points on the standard guide. The most important point of contact is the part of the guide furthest away from the router bit. As long as your instrument is touching this point, you can't overcut a channel. Before we get into making a binding or purfling cut on the body, let's take a look at another use for the ultimate binding jig. After gluing your plates to your sides to assemble the box, you need to flush trim the plates. This leaves a small amount of plate overhang, which complicates sanding the sides in prep for binding. 
To make this task easier, set up the ultimate binding jig to cut a small channel about 40 thousandths thick and just taller than the thickness of your plates. Now use these settings to trim the plates. This will get them out of the way and make sure you're not sanding plate in grain while sanding your sides and prep for binding. Now that your jig is set for cutting channels and the body has been prepped, it's time to make a cut. I usually start with binding. To start your cut, place the body on the jig at an angle, touching the most important point of contact and the guide donut. Then tilt it down until it's touching all three points of contact. Once you're in the cut, make at least three passes around the body, two in the up cut direction and a finishing pass in the down cut direction. During the cut, I focus on two things, making sure the body is touching the most important point of contact and that the body is at the topmost part of the guide. To aid in this, I suggest either kneeling or sitting in a low chair. Repeat this procedure for your perfling channels. The Elevate Ultimate Binding Jig cuts precise binding and perfling channels, simplifies setup, and saves you time. It's also extremely useful for making side prep easier. Get your Ultimate Binding Jig today at elevatelutheri.com.